As we grow up, we somehow tend to look back on the period of our childhood as a quieter and safer time. And many of us can recall hearing the stories from our parents and our grandparents about how they would walk to and from school each day and how the distance seemed to increase and the weather conditions worsen with each retelling. Rose-colored glasses aside, the trek to and from school each day has always been a time of vulnerability for children. And in February of 1986, the true meaning of what was once called stranger danger hit the town of Oak Hill, West Virginia like a lightning bolt. In the winter of 1986, Teresa Ann Woods was still a relative newcomer to Oak Hill, having lived in this average-sized Appalachian community for little more than six months. Teresa was one of many children and teenagers who chose to walk home after school each day, and for Teresa, this daily journey was not even one mile long. However, on February 20th, 1986, something happened that would throw Teresa off her normal course and would soon throw her family, as well as Oak Hill, first into a near panic and then into a state of righteous indignation. Oak Hill, West Virginia, population 8,000, is a typical small town and suburban community located in Fayette County. Situated roughly 30 miles southwest of Charleston, Oak Hill sits at the very foot of the Appalachian Spine in rich, bituminous coal country. With its rolling hills, tiny shops, and genuine mountain charm, it often resembles something straight out of a Norman Rockwell painting. Overall, the crime rate is low, and the daily activity for most residents is typically routine and blissfully uneventful. However, since February of 1986, this quiet Appalachian town has had to live with the unnerving knowledge that one of its own was once forcibly snatched up and then brutally murdered, and with the equally unnerving knowledge that the killer has never been apprehended. Teresa Wood seemed to disappear without a trace on her way home from school that cold winter day in 1986. The community closed ranks and exhaustive search efforts were undertaken. Four months later, Teresa's remains were found and the community went into mourning. Today, authorities are continuing their search for Wood's killer, a killer who chose as his or her victim a shy 13-year-old girl who, by all accounts, did not have an enemy in the world. Teresa Ann Woods was born in Montgomery, West Virginia on April 6, 1972 to Betty and Donald Woods. She grew up in the tiny rural community of Powelton in Fayette County. Her father, Donald, owned and operated a grocery store in nearby Kimberley. Teresa's parents divorced when she was very young. Her family described her as a friendly child who excelled academically and loved playing the saxophone. Teresa was always very close to her family and a small circle of friends. In 1985, Teresa Woods moved to Oak Hill with her mother, Betty, and stepfather, Rick Holcomb. Teresa started classes at Collins Middle School in September of that year. Her mother and stepfather went to work at B&B Convalescent, a local business which provided transportation for the elderly and infirmed. Everyone who knew Teresa described her as a kind and loving, if somewhat shy, individual. Teresa reportedly did not make friends easily, and the move to Oak Hill from her former home in Powelton had been difficult. By February of 1986, however, Teresa seemed to be settling in. 
She loved the outdoors as well as music and was an honor student at Collins Middle School. Teresa's mother and stepfather moved into a rented trailer on Butler Street next door to their employers, Robert and Billy Skaggs. Teresa soon struck up a friendship with their daughter, Angel Skaggs, who was a few years her senior. The Skaggs later described Teresa as almost being a part of their family. February 20th, 1986 started like any other day for Teresa. She and Angel Skaggs were driven to the Collins Middle School by Teresa's mother, Betty. Betty later reported that she did not notice anything unusual about Teresa's demeanor that morning. Teresa and Angel were dropped off as usual and remained in attendance for the entire day. At the end of each school day, Teresa would typically walk from Collins Middle School to the office where her mother and stepfather worked, a distance of just under one mile. Normally, Teresa would make the trip with Angel Skaggs. However, on February 20th, Angel was carrying a large load of books for her brother, Alan, who was homesick that day. She and Teresa did not meet up along Jones Avenue as per usual. Collins Middle School closed in January of 2015. In 1986, it was located here at 601 Jones Avenue, six blocks west of Main Street. Less than one block east at 529 Jones Avenue was a 7-Eleven convenience store, a popular meeting and stopping off point for other students who also walked to school. At approximately 3 p.m. on February 20th, Teresa was observed standing outside of this store, leaning against a post. This was the last time that Teresa Woods would be seen alive. On the day she disappeared, Teresa was dressed in blue jeans, a lavender blouse, gray suede boots with fur lining, and a blue jean jacket. Teresa also was carrying a medium-sized pocketbook with a shoulder strap. She may also have been wearing dangly earrings and a necklace at the time. Teresa was five feet three inches tall and had shoulder-length red hair. A short time later, Angel Skaggs arrived as planned at the B&B Convalescent Office, which was located here at 153 Main Street, directly across the street from the Oak Hill Post Office. When Teresa failed to show up after several hours, her mother and stepfather instinctively knew that something was wrong. Teresa's mother, Betty, wasted no time and immediately contacted the authorities as well as Teresa's biological father, Donald Woods. Donald Woods still lived in Powhatan, West Virginia, yet he too wasted no time in responding. He closed his grocery store and immediately drove to Oak Hill to join in the search for Teresa. As is often common with missing teenagers, police initially theorized that Teresa may have run away from home. However, a check with her parents and stepfather revealed that Teresa had taken none of her possessions with her. Collins Middle School confirmed that Teresa had remained at school the entire day. Further arguing against the runaway theory, Teresa was known to be very close to her parents and was looking forward to her upcoming birthday celebration on April 6th when she was due to receive a color television set as a present. Teresa's biological father, Donald Woods, did report that Teresa had seemed upset during her previous three weekend visits. Woods advised that Teresa had been crying and indicated to him that she did not want to return to Oak Hill. Her mother, Betty, also reported that in the weeks leading up to her disappearance, something appeared to be bothering Teresa, and she expressed a desire to return to her former school. Betty stated that she asked Teresa to complete her eighth grade year at Collins Middle School, and they would then discuss the possibility of changing schools. According to both Betty and Donald, Teresa never fully elaborated on the reasons for her fear, and it was assumed that she was merely homesick. Also, Teresa had informed her parents and stepfather that she had recently made a new boyfriend and was looking forward to a visit from him set for the coming Saturday. 
Her new boyfriend worked part-time at what was then an IGA grocery store, located directly across Jones Avenue from the 7-Eleven where Teresa was last seen. Teresa's family spoke with the boy, but he advised that he had not seen Teresa after school that day. The boyfriend's father later reported receiving a call from a young girl whom he assumed was Teresa, but he was unable to be certain. Police quickly moved away from the runaway theory, stating that they found no evidence that Teresa was planning to leave or go anywhere. Privately, authorities became very worried. Although no juvenile had been abducted in Oak Hill for over 20 years, police began to consider it possible that Teresa had been taken against her will. Given Teresa's shy nature, they felt it was likely that if she was abducted, she probably knew and trusted her abductor. Teresa's family blanketed Oak Hill with missing persons flyers. Local press, radio, and television broadcast photos of Teresa. Local residents recall that at one point it seemed as though an image of Teresa was hanging or posted in the window of nearly every Oak Hill business. Despite the immense media coverage and intensive searching, no trace of Teresa was found. Teresa's 14th birthday came and went with no word. The mood among Oak Hill residents was tense. Things like this simply did not happen in a quiet, tight-knit Appalachian community. Sadly, the fear of many parents was to increase long before it subsided. Around 8 p.m. on June 5th, Laurel Creek residents John and Gerald Davis left their rural home to fish for minnows in the nearby stream. While in the creek bed, John Davis stumbled upon a human skull partially submerged in the shallow water near the edge of the creek. The two men contacted the Fayette County Sheriff's Department, who immediately sealed off the area. The heavily wooded location was searched all night and into the following morning. In the area where Davis had located the skull, authorities discovered more human bones, as well as clothing fragments, an earring, and a necklace. Ominously, the search also turned up several strands of bright red hair. The deputies' hearts collectively sank. The remains and clothing fragments were sent to the West Virginia Medical Examiner's Office in Charleston. A positive identification was delayed several days as Teresa's dental records had previously been sent to California for entry into a national database. However, even without these records, authorities were certain that they had located the remains of Teresa Woods. Several days later, West Virginia medical examiner Irvin Sulfur confirmed their beliefs. Along with the official identification, Sulfur also publicly stated that Teresa had been a victim of homicide. The official cause of Teresa's death has never been released However, authorities had stated that they feel certain Teresa's murder was sexually motivated. While it closed the missing persons file, the discovery of Teresa's remains presented authorities with a tremendous hurdle. Nearly four months had passed since Teresa had last been seen alive. As the first 72 hours on any child abduction are considered to be the most crucial, police now found themselves facing a nearly insurmountable task. First time and now distance seemed to be conspiring against them. Teresa was last seen here at what was then a 7-Eleven convenience store on Jones Avenue in Oak Hill. Her normal route of travel would have had her walking the six blocks east on Jones Avenue to Main Street, turning left, and walking another few blocks to the B&B convalescent offices. As far as we know, no one is reported to have seen Teresa after she was sighted at the 7-Eleven at around 3 p.m. Teresa's remains were found in this general area, approximately eight to nine miles away along Laurel Creek and roughly one quarter mile from Laurel Creek Road. Time and the elements had left the remains completely skeletonized. 
The remains were found scattered in and around the creek bed, though authorities stated they believed this to have been the result of animal and not human activity. They feel that Teresa's body was deliberately placed in the location where it was found. Clothing fragments and jewelry found amongst the remains were consistent with what Teresa was wearing on February 20th, leading authorities to believe she had been killed and her body placed in the creek on or shortly after the day she disappeared. Just how had Teresa gotten from here, less than one block from Collins Middle School, to here, a distance of nearly 10 miles away with only two direct routes and no intersecting roads or shortcuts. A canvas of the surroundings confirmed that Teresa had no ties to the area and no reason to have been on Laurel Creek Road of her own choosing. Given the remoteness of the location, authorities feel certain that whoever placed Teresa's body in the creek bed was familiar with the Laurel Creek area. Following the identification of the remains found on Laurel Creek, the Fayette County Sheriff's Department announced that they had a suspect or suspects in the murder and were in the process of questioning them. Police also stated that they had found an important clue at the Laurel Creek location and that the medical examiner's autopsy had yielded what they described as crucial evidence. Despite the optimistic nature of these public statements, by November of 1986, the investigation seemed to have stalled. The Fayette County Sheriff's Department and the Oak Hill Detachment of the West Virginia State Police made a public appeal for anyone with information about Teresa's murder to contact them. As of 2019, the investigation into Teresa Wood's murder appears almost back at square one. In 2011, the case was taken up by Captain J.L. Cahill as a part of a concerted effort by the West Virginia State Police to re-examine cold cases. Cahill assigned the Woods investigation to then-Sergeant Jason Davis of the Oak Hill Detachment. Teresa Ann Woods was laid to rest in the Canala Valley Memorial Gardens in Glasgow, West Virginia on June 10, 1986. Reverend Rodney Nichols and Phyllis Bowling presided over the services. At the funeral, Teresa's father, Donald Woods, placed Teresa's favorite Cabbage Patch doll within her casket. In a 2011 article, Donald Woods stated that in 25 years he had never given up hope of finding his daughter's killer. Sadly, Woods would not live to see Teresa's death vindicated. He died on August 9, 2014. Teresa's mother Betty and the rest of her family and friends continue to hold out hope for justice, however belated it may be. Today the investigation into Teresa Wood's murder has once again stalled. However, as an unsolved homicide, it will never be completely closed. As with all cold cases, a successful resolution may depend on just one missing piece of information. One missing piece to a frustrating puzzle that has stymied law enforcement for over 33 years. Maybe you hold that missing piece. Please pay close attention to the following summation. Teresa Ann Woods was last seen alive at approximately 3 p.m. February 20th, 1986, at what was then a 7-Eleven convenience store at 529 Jones Avenue in Oak Hill, West Virginia. On the day she disappeared, Teresa was dressed in blue jeans, a lavender blouse, a blue jean jacket, and gray suede boots with white fur lining, and was carrying a medium-sized pocketbook with a shoulder strap. She may also have been wearing dangly earrings and a necklace at the time. Teresa was 13 years of age at the time she disappeared. An early, unconfirmed report stated that Teresa may have been seen entering a blue vehicle along Main Street in Oak Hill, six blocks east of the last confirmed sighting. Police believe that Teresa was abducted while walking from Collins Middle School in Oak Hill to the office where her mother and stepfather worked. 
Teresa was described as shy and reserved, and authorities feel it is unlikely she would have entered the vehicle of someone whom she did not know. Teresa's remains, jewelry, and fragments of clothing were found on June 5, 1986, in the bed of Laurel Creek, approximately three miles west of Fayetteville and eight miles north of the 7-Eleven in Oak Hill. The remains were found scattered along the creek about a quarter mile from Laurel Creek Road. Authorities had indicated that a clue found at the crime scene could be crucial in identifying her killer. However, they have never publicly expanded on this statement. Teresa's death was ruled a homicide. However, the exact cause of death has never been released. Authorities would be most interested in speaking with anyone who may have seen or heard from Teresa after 3 p.m. on February 20, 1986, or who may have noticed unusual activity along Laurel Creek or Laurel Creek Road shortly thereafter. Authorities also would like to speak to anyone who may have heard Teresa talk about any kinds of problems or fears in the days and weeks leading up to her disappearance. In particular, any mention of unwanted romantic advances or threats of physical harm. If you have any information on the disappearance and murder of Teresa Woods, please contact the Oak Hill Detachment of the West Virginia State Police at 304-469-2915.